Hello and welcome to Critical Line Item. My name is Tom Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this podcast. One of the biggest issues at the moment across Australia has been the fact that new measures are coming in to grapple with the spread of the coronavirus. Not all of those measures have been welcome. People have been through lockdown one, Victoria is in lockdown two, not everybody's happy. But transposed over that is something particularly unique, and that is the fact that there are people who are being asked to wear masks externally, outside, in public, in densely populated areas. We don't normally walk around wearing masks, uh, masks around the place in Australia, and this does have various impacts on the way people see themselves and on the way they see others. Joining me is uh, an expert, expert in psychology from RMIT, James Collette, who's written and taught and spoken a lot about this area in recent times. So James will take us into why we, why people might be uncomfortable with masks and how we should be coping with it. James, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, Tom. Now, there's a couple of things that are going on in all of this with the coronavirus. Um, your area of interest, of course, is psychology. You teach it, you deal with it. Well, why is it that, as people, we struggle with a directive to wear a mask? Well, there's a, a deceptive amount of stuff going on under the surface there. So we've, we've got a few different reasons why people may, uh, I suppose, push back against the idea of wearing masks. And we've been able to see a lot of these already play out in the USA. Um, and now, of course, uh, playing out in Victoria with our, our second lockdown. And so a big one is the, the sheer uncertainty that COVID-19 has placed on us in 2020. Nobody saw it coming and nobody knows when it's going to end. There, there's an absolute ton of unknowns. We, we don't know if we're symptomatic. We don't know if someone gets it, if it will be a very intense response that risks fatality or if it will be a light response, as we've seen from um, you know, some areas of the media. And so there's so much uncertainty around not just the disease, itself, but also the outcomes in terms of the economy, in terms of jobs, that people are really feeling, I think, a need for some sort of anchor and some control. And so when people are feeling this uncertainty, we usually have a difficulty dealing with it. Like anything, there are degrees. So some people are fine with uncertainty. You know, they, they don't mind if they don't know what they're doing tomorrow, for example. Other people really need to feel that they they can almost reliably, I guess, predict the future. Like, oh, you know, I know what I'll be doing um, in six months. I know what I'll be doing next year, etc. And so in the face of this uncertainty, I think what we're seeing and what the evidence suggests is that part of rebelling against the directive to wear face masks is about personal control and autonomy. It's an attempt to sort of take that autonomy back and say, well, no, you don't get to tell me what to do. This is my my sense of, of personal control. And while I certainly don't agree with it, you know, I think masks are a great thing. And ironically, something we can all control to help out the community by wearing them. That's the basic psychology that, that's been raised behind what we're seeing. And it's not that different, is it, to the resistance some people had to the initial directive to stay at home, is it? You're exactly right. Yeah, it, it is very much a an almost um, you know immediate reaction of there's there's uncertainty in the world. There's this underlying worry, uh, if not dread. Um, and the, the reaction is, you don't get to tell me what to do. I'm, I'm in control of my life. So, yeah, it's, it's an attempt to preserve control in a world where, at the moment, there's a lot of unpredictable things happening. One of the uh, curious things about masks is that um, uh, it's not necessarily known, and then please correct me if you think I've got the reader this wrong, but it's not something that you normally see happening in in a Western type cultural environment. We've seen it in in various Asian countries that have got high levels of pollution. They've gone through SARS, for example, um, and it's almost 
uh, incumbent upon them the minute they go out to put a mask on to protect themselves. Um, are there cultural elements to this that people need to be mindful of when they're thinking about whether they wear or don't wear? Um, definitely. Per perhaps not if individuals are thinking of whether to wear or not wear, but certainly um, as, a, as a, a general social impact. In Australia, we don't have that, that cultural tradition of wearing masks. Um, like you mentioned, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that mask wearing is mostly associated with Asian countries where there's a high level of population density, um, often uh, a tremendous, although I, I must admit we're, we're seeing that in Australia as well, um, a tremendous public transport density as well. So if you're, you're thinking of commuters on train lines and the capacity of someone with a cold to have spread it to everyone in the carriage, um, it's something where masks have been used for, uh, I don't know exactly when, but I think it's safe to say decades. And it's also something where it speaks to that idea of a, a more communal-based society where people are more mindful of their community. And so the people wearing masks are usually ones who are sick. So it's a way of saying, oh, I'm sick and I don't want to spread it to my fellow community members. Therefore, I'm going to uh, wear this mask, which is a great thing. And to be honest, even without COVID-19, I suspect it's something that would have started to uh, be taken up by other countries as obviously there are more countries in the world that have greater density of population, greater density of public transport use. And it really makes sense from that perspective of when we're all really close together, if someone's ill, well, the best thing is to stay home. But if that's not an option, then wearing a mask. And of course, I'm speaking outside of COVID-19 with that example. At the moment, everyone should be staying home as much as they can. If we're looking at um, the notion of mask wearing, there's something physical that happens. Uh, people can't observe uh, the lower lower half of someone's face. So they can't see the, the, the mouth contort and that there are some visual cues that people miss. Is this a reason why some people might find it uncomfortable? Uh, yeah, I think so. There, there's a few levels to that. The first one is simply the fact that putting on a mask, it, it's a physical thing. You can see it. Uh, COVID-19, when you think about it, while it's been quite terrifying, one of the things that makes it scary is we can't see it. You know, I can't look at someone walking down the street and think, oh, they've got COVID-19. I'm going to going to keep my distance there. So it's it's an unseen threat in that regard. Now, part of what the challenge with the masks has been for a lot of people, I think, is it's an observable sign of how much the world has changed this year. So people are wearing masks, they're seeing it as, oh, okay, I've, I've adjusted, you know, the way I look, they're walking around seeing other people in masks thinking, oh, this is this is what the world is like now. So that that's one part of it. It's a an observable touchstone for all the, the great change that 2000, uh, sorry, yeah, 2020 has seen. Now, the second part of that, as you mentioned, the mask covers the lower part of the face. And if we're thinking of nonverbal language, well, our first go-to is going to be facial expressions. And if you think of the sheer amount of communication that comes from facial expressions, nuances of emotion, uh, whether it's warmth, whether it's signaling sarcasm, um, whether it's, you know, a, a sneer if you're communicating something that's not nice. Um, certainly, the, the face is a real gateway to the emotions where we're expressing in our speech. Now, at least in public life, that's going to be somewhat cut off. And so people are going to find that there's greater capacity for miscommunication because of that. And I think that's a challenge we're going to see as well. How do we deal with that, James? Because we, you know, there, are, there are those for whom wearing a mask could be a, a confronting experience, um, but also they will be struggling and to try and work out how to communicate in, in the first instance between people who have no real uh, impediment to communication. They're not deaf, they're not um, visually impaired. Uh, there are other issues with, with some of those uh, with disabilities. I'm partially deaf, but I don't, I don't 
exclusively rely on lip reading that mm. I can still hear, but other people may may find that difficult. What what should people try and do in this in, in this period when we're all you know, putting the uh, putting the masks on? That's a great question there, Tom. So we need to, yeah, firstly, I think just acknowledge that different sections of the community are going to be differently impacted. Uh, the, the deaf community, like you noted, there's going to be people who rely tremendously on lip reading that are now going to find that uh, obviously something that can't be done without uh, asking about it. Um, for the, the general community, we're going to have different levels of how easily they're able to pick up on communications. Um, we might have complications around things like uh, whether just particular, you know, voice styles of people who speak in a low voice or something like that versus perhaps um, people with, with accents where the other party isn't used to that accent. And so overcoming these challenges, first off, I, I think I, I want to start my response with something maybe a bit upbeat, because while this is a challenge, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's the biggest challenge we're facing as a society, the wearing of masks. I think COVID generally is a big challenge, but with wearing of masks, I think that as a community, we're resilient, we're adaptable, and we will get through this. Now, I had a, a great message on radio the other day from a caller who was talking about they're actually blind, so they, they can't see. Uh, and I believe, while I didn't uh, get a chance to talk to this person at length, um, I believe that they'd previously uh, maybe been able to see in earlier life. And they were saying that so they haven't been able to see facial expressions for, for X number of years, and that their message to the population was, I got through it, you know, you'll get through it as well. So I think we, we've got to remember <laughs> first off, yeah, that, that capacity that we're, we're human beings, we look out for one another and we work around problems like this. Now, just to, to get on to the specifics, I think a lot of it is just being mindful that we have a much greater capacity to be misinterpreted at the moment, or as well as being misinterpreted, the anonymity of masks means I think it's easier to be overlooked as well. So it's not just about uh, talking to, say, a shop assistant in a short store and they don't understand you, but also it might be perhaps waiting, you know, you're trying to make eye contact with someone to ask them a question question or something like that, and they don't see you. I think we're going to have to be mindful that that's occurring and simply, you know, acknowledge that, okay, that's what's happening and it's happening because it's we're wearing masks. It's not happening because the person's trying to uh, give me sass or because they, you know, don't like me as a, as a customer or as a, a student for, don't forget, they're wearing masks in um, schools that are, are running at the moment, or at least um, some schools are still running. And so, yeah, we need to just firstly be mindful of our capacity to be misinterpreted and give the benefit of the doubt in that case. Now, the other side of that is we need to also be mindful of our capacity to misinterpret others. So if we think someone's upset at us or if we think someone's being unhelpful or if they're, they're being snide, etc., cetera, uh, we need to extend the benefit of the doubt to them as well. So I think that's the, the first simple ingredient is we just to need to be a bit more mindful and forgiving of our fellow community members and, of course, you know, hope that they're extending the same thing to us. Now, the second thing is in our language specifically, remembering that half of our facial expressions are cut off. And look, I think if we're comparing, you know, the nonverbal expression we get from our eyes versus the nonverbal expression we get from our mouth, uh, I think we, we've lost, you know, more than 50% of the emotional expression that the face can provide. So because of that, we need to remind ourselves to be a bit more direct in our language than we might be normally. And when out in public, being mindful that people can't see the emotions we're trying to express, we may actually need to ease into the habit of being more explicit in the way we express emotions. And by explicit, I obviously don't mean, you know, swearing in an explicit language. Language, but emotions being visible rather than implied. And by visible, I'm talking in speech. So emotion you can hear. So for example, at the moment, uh, you and I are speaking over the internet and you can't see, you know, if I'm smiling or something, but you know, um, 
you might say something and, and a way of me expressing emotion that where you can't see any of my facial expressions might be, oh, that, that's a funny one, uh, Tom, or, oh, that's, um, you know, I'm, I'm laughing uh, so much at that, or, oh, that's, uh, when I said that, I'm just being sarcastic or, you know, not having a go, that sort of stuff. I think we're going to need to be expressing more of what we're feeling simply in our words rather than relying on facial expressions as we have, if that makes sense. Absolutely. One of the other things that, uh, uh, if we can, and I'm mindful of the time, uh, one of the other things that is of interest uh, to people is also how children cope. So how should parents talk to children about wearing masks uh, in in the environment if they uh, if they end up being required to do so look that's a it's a challenging one the stance that i would take is to frame the mask as well exactly what it is and that that's something we often forget with children we forget that they do have a great capacity to to understand things if they're presented you know as they are to to adults and with the mask the way i would be framing it is simply that it's a it's protection and even better than that and this is a message you know for any age group of the community can get behind uh, more than protection, the mask's even better because it's it's a selfless form of protection. It's about if you wear this, you know, it's going to provide some protection for you, but it's also protecting other members of the community. And if we all wear these masks, then that's something that's going to uh, help us be able to get back to a, a state of normal or the new normal, as they're calling it, uh, quicker than not. So I would be framing it to kids like that as a as a protection rather than as you know something that's uh, onerous or, or burdensome. I've even seen some great uh, creative solutions to masks for kids. You know where they're they're more individualized, or it's like the mask say a superhero might wear or a, a cartoon character, and that's a great way of getting children on board as well. The other thing also is, and this is another message that is just as valid for adults, is we need to remember that aspect of masks where they're actually a really cool thing in that we can take control of them. So when a kid puts on a mask, when I put on a mask, it's something I can do to help myself out and help out my, my community, the people I'm encountering in shopping centres, etc. Uh, I can't vaccinate myself. I, I can't spot COVID-19 uh, viruses in the air and, you know, shoot them down uh, with a pop gun or something. But what I can do is put on a mask. And I think that's the other thing we need to emphasise. It's actually a great source of, of uh, what we call agency in psychology. You know, it's something within our personal agency or our ability to control control. And so, if anything, we should be feeling more confident because of the masks. It's like, great, we've got a tool that anyone can use to help combat this. James, that's an absolutely sensational message to conclude the short session uh, I've had with you uh, on masks on. Uh, thank you for joining me to, um, uh, for, and explaining precisely what all of this is about. Thank you for having me, Tom. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you, and hope we can do so again reasonably soon. I look forward to it, mate. Take care, stay safe, and all the best. Cheers. Thank you.